everybody's down right here, um, but writing is writing. Um, and they asked me to talk about my um, writing process and, and how I do things and, and what I do. Um, writers, they usually talk about you're either a plotter or you're a pantser. Um, plotters are the people that you know write their outlines and really know what they're, they're going to write about and how they're going to do it. Um, I consider myself a pantser with roadmap. Um, I don't want to write a book that um, I already know the ending because I get bored and I stop writing it. So I never know what the ending is going to be when I start writing either. Um, I just know where it's starting and I know the characters and where I'm going to go from there is all up in the air. Um, and, but I say I have a road map because I'm a big fan of Save the Cat. Um, it's beat. They're beats. Um, they talk about story beats. I mean, you've heard like the, the hero's journey, which is um, Joseph Campbell. There's all kinds of different types of beats you can do. Um, I happen to like the Save the Cats um, version. Um, it actually started out, Save the Cats started out um, with Blake Schneider. He actually did, does, um, he does um, screenwriting. And he, he made it off of screenwriting. And if you, it's really fascinating stuff because if you really pay attention, to movies, you can see the beats that happen and the different things that happen. Because you know when a book sometimes falls flat, it probably is missing some critical element in, in, the, in the thing. Like, you know, I, I don't have, there's like 15 beats and I don't have them memorized. I have all of my computers, so it's like, I go, I'm going to this beat next. So, you know, you want to lay out the person's um, world the way it is right now, um, where they're at now, because you always want some kind of character arc. Nobody wants to read a story where nothing happens. Um, so you're always looking for that character arc. And, and I look at that character arc and, and figure out what it is that they have to go to next. And there's usually something, some kind of catalyst that happens in my stories that makes them leave their world behind of what their regular world was. So that's kind of where I start out is what's the catalyst? What big thing happens to them? Like I write a dystopian trilogy. Of course, that's an easy catalyst. You know, the, Everybody's dying, so why is that happening? Um, and, and, and as I go, I follow these beats, so that's where I have a roadmap. I know which beat to go to next, so I rarely get writer's block because it's like, okay, now I've got to go to this beat, now I've got to go to this beat. And then at the midpoint, when Save the Cat, it's always about whether you have a false victory or a false defeat. Because usually, you know how the stories, you know, you get to this middle of the story in a movie or something, and it's like, well, where's this going to go? Because, hey, they already made it, or, or life is just in such bad shape. So at midpoint, you usually turn it around on its ear. And it's like, okay, they think they're going great. Well, then everything falls apart. Or everything's starting to fall apart, so then you start to have things go together. Um, and then you always have to have, a, one of my favorite beats is the dark night of the soul. Um, you know, when the character hits that really low point of, you know, how are they going to recover from this? How are they going to learn their lesson? Um, and, and the lesson usually is, and that's one of the earlier beats, the, the theme stated beat, um, which is, what's this really about? Because most characters and most of us in our lives, um, we think we want or need one thing in our lives and we're usually wrong about it. We usually need something else. So our characters start out thinking, this is what I need for life to be better for me, and they're always wrong. And usually some other character it's, tries to tell them they're wrong, but you don't listen to other people. You, you have to learn these lessons for yourself. So when they hit the dark night of the soul and, and do some of those things, they really figure out what they really need. Um, you know, because it's always about their want. Well, this, you know, if, I, if I win the lottery, then my life is going to be good. If I, if I do this, then this is going to be what's good. So you always have to have them find themselves in the end. I mean, that's why we listen to stories, isn't it? We, why we read stories, because we want to see somebody come up with something and say, wow, I, I figured out, you know, that whatever that thing was. So that's kind of the process I do when I write. Um, that's, that's the, I, I try to write three books a year. I mean, that's, I, I, I have a publisher, so I'm on the publishing schedule March, July, and November. So I, I have a, I'm pretty disciplined, so I know I've got to be doing this piece at this time, I've got to submit it by this time, I've got to do this by this time, so, um, because I need to do that, I do work full time, so I, I do need to have that kind of 
structure or I could be sitting on a manuscript for a long, long time. So I know, like, right now I have a book coming out in November. Um, I've got one that I just finished that's now with my beta readers and I'm just researching the one that I need to start. I, I've already got all my um, books for 2023 written. So they're all ready, so I'm already starting to think about 2024. Um, so there's a lot of those kind of things that you do that you, you know, it, everybody, every author is different though. So, you know, we all have our own different techniques. We all have our own way of doing things. That's what works for me. Now, some people may say, oh, wow, that's just way too anal. You know, what are you thinking? Having this scheduled out, doesn't that ruin your creative process? But for me, it, it gets the decision of what I'm supposed to be doing out of my head because that will get in my way of the creative process if I'm always like, okay, when do I got to start this? I got this little chart that says, okay, it's November. This is what I'm supposed to be working on in November. So that helps me. Now, other authors may say, oh, that's, that's not for me. So the writing process is different for everybody, um, but it, it, it's a very, I find it to be a very rewarding thing. It's, you know, you can take your characters anywhere. You can, you know, you, you kind of have control. Now, people that don't write, don't understand the statement, but you know, I'll, I'll come out, you know, from writing. It's like, oh my god, I cannot believe my character just did that. They did something I was not expecting them to do. People, are, I see the writers in here nodding, and saying, uh huh. And, and, and you know, people that don't write are looking at me like, aren't you writing this? I'm like, yes, but you would not believe what they just did. You know, they fall in love with the wrong person. They, they just do stuff that you are not expecting them to do, and. That's, you understand. I cried when I killed all my character, and I was like, why, why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I've done that too. It's like, why did she have to die? <laughs> Don't ask, you're the one who killed her. <laughs> but, but definitely, I mean, it, it, that's the fun part of writing, though, is because you just are able to, you know, you, you're, you're on a journey with your characters, and they, they talk to you. I mean, my characters like to shower with me a lot because they're always in my head when I'm showering. And I'm scrambling for a notebook. I'm like, you know, my notebook is all messy because I've, you know, got it all wet. <laughs> dry erase board. Dry erase. I do have little post it notes that, that, that some of my friends bought me that you can actually put in the shower and write on because that's when, and, and I figured it out because there's nothing else to do but think when you're in the shower. I mean, you kind of got the showering piece down so you don't have to really think about it, but everything else you're thinking about are things and that's the only thing you have to do. So they're always giving me ideas in the shower. Um, so um, that's why I write, because it's just so much fun to get inside of characters. And, and, and even though you control them, they do have a mind of their own and they do become something, you know? And, and, and one of the things I, I struggle with um, is I know what the characters are doing, but it, it, it always shocks me when they, well, you didn't understand what the character is trying to do? Because I, I have beta readers, um, and beta readers are people who, you know, will read your stuff before you even get to the point of sending it to the publisher, will give you suggestions, and will ask you questions, and, and you don't realize how much you know what's up here and you think you put it on the page, and your beta reader's like, well, why did they do that? It's like, well, wasn't it obvious? Well, no, not really. So that really helps having those beta readers. I couldn't do it without the beta readers because they figured things out that I thought was very obvious. Um, I, my education in social work, so I think about how people behave and all that. So I just assume everybody else thinks like a social worker. I discovered they don't. <laughs> so so th those are some of my processes. Um, it's a lot of fun. I mean, did anybody have any questions about? Did you say that you work full time and write three books a year? Yes, I do. Yeah, it's all for me. I got. Oh, I actually got it with me. I, I got a little. What did they do with it? I have my little chart. That, that tells me for my March release, I need to begin writing it by January. And, and, and I have what I'm supposed to be doing. And, and the thing is, is that when you're doing this, when you're doing three, you're not really working on just one book at a time. Because I'm writing one, 
My publisher's editor is sending me edits back for one of them, and my beta readers are sending me. So right now I'm really working on, I've got my November release coming out. I've got my March release is already with the, it's already put to bed, done. It's already up on Amazon. My July release is with my publisher right now. I'm waiting to see if I get a contract, and that will soon go into edits with the publisher. My November 2023 release is now with my beta readers. And I'm doing research for my March 2024 book. So it's all just, I'm very, which helps me because I, I know where, and, I, and it, it really did because I, I get myself all stressed out because it's like, where am I at? So I put it on a little piece of paper. It's like, oh, it's November right now. I need to finalize this one and I need to do this. And, and it keeps me set. Now it might not work for everybody, but, <laughs> but getting, getting structured, I, I, I'm a firm believer in the less decisions you have to make and the less stuff you have to think about. And so that kind of cleared my brain of having to think about deadlines, thinking about that. It's like, I have no idea. I just look at my piece of paper and say, oh, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And it clears my mind to be more creative that way. I bet your social work patients influence your writing creativity that, right? Yeah, I mean, because my social work, it's, it's kind of funny because I think I write light, happy. I'm, I'm a big optimist. I'm a very hopeful person. But I forget that social work stuff can be a little heavy for people. And I think I'm like rainbows and kittens. And it's like, okay, well, your first one had domestic violence in it. Let's see, you know, you, they had the end of the world. You know, my, my new holiday book I just finished writing is a holiday one. I'm like, oh, this is Hallmark Life. Well, it's set in a homeless shelter, so maybe it's not quite as Hallmark-like as I think it is, but um, yeah, so, so my social work and really priming inside of people's heads and, and really getting to the depth of the emotions is, is pretty much what I, I focus on a lot with my writing, so. And you learned to do that structure thing probably from school, from college, right? Yeah, I, I'm just a very structured... I can't do that. Yeah, I, 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 I'm lucky that way, I, I'm very structured and I like to find like different, I write in a program called Scrivener, I don't know, I love, it, it's, it's, it's Scrivener, I would not write in Word anymore because you, I have all my Save the Cat beats right in Scrivener and then I just write, I write scenes and I throw them into each of my, my beats and I don't do chapters until I convert it over to Word when I go to edit it. So I'll convert it over to Word, and then I put the chapters in. And one of the coolest advice I ever got from somebody is, um, I don't, when I edit now, I have the computer read it out loud to me. Yes. Instead of reading it myself, because you don't hear, hearing it read out loud, when you're reading it yourself and you wrote it, you're missing stuff, but when you hear it read out loud, you know, oh my God, I used the same word seven times in the last paragraph, or, Oh my God, that's a clunky sentence. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and you don't catch it when you're reading it yourself, but when you hear it in your ear, it's like, oh God, that was a horrible sentence. Why did you do that? So that's a really good, that, that's made my editing a lot funner for me because it makes you think of it in a different way. So highly recommend that too. It, like Scrivener, I love Scrivener too. Any other? How many books have you written? I have got, my fifth release will come out in November. I, my first release came out in April of 2021. I actually started writing because of COVID. I wrote a long time ago, but I put it away. And with COVID stress, um, I have a more stressful job. So I, with COVID stress, it's like, I just need to escape. So I started writing and then I started submitting and and then it's happened from there. So. Um, yeah, so I've got five, my fifth one will come out, and I've got my next three written for all next year. So by the end of, and then my, my cool, new one I'm getting ready to write, starting probably in a couple weeks, is about storm chasers. Um, it's gonna be with storm chasers, and I've been researching, I've learned more about tornadoes and all that kind of stuff. I love, my, my one that's coming out in March is set in 1980 during the eruption of Mount St. Helens. So, and being a social worker, I love the disaster because I like to see how people respond to, you know, tragedy and things like that. So, 
Okay. 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 Okay.